Each day, every day, 22 veterans, our heroes take their own lives. There's so many more weighing these options. And mostly, the signals aren't there for us to see. Every day, without exception, this triple purple heart recipient arises long before the sun does. His commitment to serving his fellow veterans, especially those with PTSD, and the wild horses um, who helped them, and who are also dealing with physical and mental trauma. There's no days off here. And unfortunately, this is the exact trauma that landed right on the doorstep of J.B. Hoffman. Ultimately giving the energy and the inspiration behind what the Liberty Project is today. With the understanding of how close suicide slid under the radar and so close to him, the message was loud and clear from this point on. It was time to roll up sleeves, do whatever it takes to deliver a place for the wounded to heal. You know, to heal amongst their brothers and sisters, the ones that understand what they've been through. Thing they help immensely is softening the trauma that's felt by these Mustangs as they're rounded up by BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. So this idea to help his fellow vets and create liberty projects to take the two American symbols that have been left behind, the American Mustang who roamed the wild prairies and are being rounded up by BLM and we can go into that later, and the veterans who we all know the trials and tribulations behind the, the services that are there or not there for these people we send off to protect ourselves here. So the idea came from a tragedy of loss and the idea that the signals weren't there. They weren't open. They weren't outwardly easy to see. And I ate at J.P. Hoffman for a long time until he came up with this idea to make sure that if he could catch anybody else and help them, there was an opportunity to do so in a quiet place like Sandy Valley. So personally, I'm not a vet. I've never served. I'm in between that Vietnam era through the Cold War into 9-11 and beyond. And uh, 
there's a part of me that understands that brethren, that brotherhood that they hold so dear due to some of my other activities in life that aren't nearly as intense. But rather than me talk anymore about what the Liberty Project is about, why don't we just let JP talk from his heart as he did at the end of a very heartfelt long day as we buried Mustang. And he addressed his peers the way it should be. One bet to another. One brother to another. And he's chosen to try and make a difference. Please welcome J.P. Long. The American Indian believed that if someone was diagnosed with an ailment, physical or mental, that it was a curse being placed on them. They had never had that until Europeans came here. If you think about that, that can become an identity if you choose to accept it. Only when you realize that you are the one creating your life, that's when a total rewiring of yourself, a 180, can occur. This is a difficult and honest discussion with yourself. How can we grow from our successes and failures? How can we find peace and joy in the aftermath of some, such extreme tragedy? You guys are looking at one of my horses here. I just lost him two weeks ago. He was my soulmate, Thomas Dream. In the, in the aftermath of extreme tragedy, unbearable loss, Horrific images that play over and over again and burn an irreparable scar on your soul. The true meaning for life that you have to find is found from within. It's not from pharmaceutical, medication, environmental stimulation, social media, complex programming that's put on us every day. So our program's a little different. We're saying it's time for you to take charge of your life. And so when we bring the guys in, we, we work with them to do that. You're not the victim of your life or your circumstances. You're the victim of your own choices. We have an addiction problem. We are addicted to other people's ideas. We're addicted to their dreams. We become the victim of our life experiences. To find truth in who you are, you have to remove the cemented layers and labels that we have allowed to have been placed on us during the course of our life. We have to throw away the magic pills, quit looking to the outside for answers. It's not the next self-help webinar or 12-step e-training book that's going to make you whole. You have to find yourself. And here's the thing, and I know I'm in a room full of tough guys who've been in some of the hardest battles you can ever imagine that are in this room tonight. This battle I'm talking about is the hardest one, the loneliest one, most heartbreaking, but it's also the most important that you need to fight. Life is not designed to punish us. I'm learning as I go, right? So it's not designed to punish us. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that's why we're here. We're here to gain wisdom and knowledge and to ensure that we are never the victim of life again or the circumstances. And the time to act is now. Before I move on, I want to say wisdom is being able to take these bad experiences and remove the emotion that's associated with living them. So 57% higher risk of suicide in the veteran community. 125,000 plus vets died by suicide since 9-11. I'm a pre-9-11 guy by 10 years. Um, that, that should be shocking and maddening to all of us in this room. That's crazy. How? Well, you used to say 22 a day. It's now 24 a day. 
right? So we need to figure out why is that when we're throwing all this money, which we'll get to. Now I'm going to talk about why the Mustangs instead of domesticated horses. There's equine therapy programs out there that are, you know, we're going to do an extreme horse petting program for three days. That does nothing. So we use, we use the Mustangs. Another reason is because the vet can particularly identify with the Mustang. We take an unpurposed Mustang after they've been taken off the range with an unpurposed person at that point. Together they will find their purpose. I'm not going to tell them what it is. I'm just providing the tools and the backdrop for them to find it. <clears throat> so we have these two groups. Both have money, uh, government money thrown at them. You could argue it's not enough or it's too much for either group. So why is it getting worse, like I said? We're finding new life for the Mustang. We are in our program in law enforcement, ranching, rodeo, pets, trail riding, and then as well as honor guard. And so we talked to a lot of the Arden Guard units, including Case on Platoon in DC, and uh, they're all interested and in wanting to use Mustangs in the program, which is great. But both need purpose, the Mustang and the person. What is a Mustang? I, I've been around horses my entire life, and I used to think if somebody talked to me about a Mustang, I wouldn't even talk to them. I had this image embedded in, in my soul that they were a 13-hand date that was running around tearing up, eating up all the land. Boy, was I wrong. So, Mustangs are much like us and much like our veterans. They come from various breeds. So, there can be Appaloosas, Paint, Quarter Horse. I mean, when you do the blood test on them, it's amazing. Draft horses are in the Mustang group. So, they're from all these groups that are out there that are wild horses. And um, so, I think that the, the horses were simply turned loose from the 1600s to all the way to the Great Depression. Somebody would go broke, lose the ranch, get beat up, turn out an area, they would just turn, open the gate, turn the horses loose, or they would escape. That's where, this, that's where the population came from. So when the Mustangs are rounded up, they're often split from their family units. It's very hard, right? So they're, they're split from their family units. The, the horse is very familiar. They're very much community members, right? They all have different tasks. I'm going to give you just a couple of facts and then I'm going to move on. Some of you at the ranch today heard me spew some of these. The horses have the fastest reaction time of any domesticated animal. That, that's amazing to think that Mayweather could stand there and a horse could strike him in the face before he could block it, right? So that's something to think about. They only sleep three hours a day. How often did your dog sleep with the predator, right? They are prey animals. The lead stallion, you saw Church up there who we lost, who was my soulmate. He was a lead stallion. People say, how do you know he was a lead stallion, JP, when he was out there? And because of the way he acted, he patrolled the ranch head down all day. They keep their head up, they're patrolling. They are the security force for that herd or that band. The lead mare job is to actually find food and water, and so everybody else falls in line in the group. Contrary to popular belief, and I, and I know it's not popular when I say it, horses aren't looking for friends, they're looking for leaders. And, but they can be a trusted, trusted member of your family and with you. And just like I said, he was my soulmate, he was. So that, that's where they can, you can build a trust relationship like no other. If you're not the leader of the horse, they will quickly disregard you. you they will put you in the path of where they think you are. They will disregard what you're telling them or trying to teach them. So it, it, when you watch a vet, and, and I've had diff I had one in particular come in, walks in the, the round, man, I get him in there with the Mustang, the Mustang starts prancing around, putting his head up, dancing, kicking out at him. And he's like, this horse is stupid, the horse is stupid, I, I can't do this. I brought him out, I walk in, I show him the horse is totally different, and I said, they're a mirror to you. Whatever you're projecting and feeling inside, even if you're hiding it, they can sense it and see it. And they'll put it right back on you. They're literally a mirror. Sometimes it's hard for us to look in the mirror. They, they'll give you an exact, perfect picture of what you are. And so that being said, he said, you know what? And it wasn't that day. It was later on. But he said, that's what my kids feel. I come home. I don't beat my kids. I don't beat my wife. But they feel it. So they're walking on eggshells. And he said, now I understand. 
That's what my kids feel. If I didn't do that, the horse man would do, feel that. The government spends $330 billion a year on the VA system, $68 million in the wild annually, on the $68 million on the wild Mustang program. It's just something to think about. People always would have said when we started the 501c3, we started the Liberty Project, hey man, can you, uh, you can go out and get government grants. So we hired, talked to some grant writers, Laura and I did start calling them. And every one of them had the same thing. You can pay us to write these grants for veterans. You're not going to get it. We'll go after the we'll go after the horse side. You're going to who do you know? Who can help you? Who can you put on your application in the grant? You can pay me, and I'll go after it. But they said in our experience, now these people didn't know each other, so it's been an eye opener. So what we teach at the ranch? Let's, let's go into that a little bit. I'm going to give you a quote. Whatever you vividly imagine ardently desire, enthusiastically act upon, must inevitably come to pass. Gary LeFew was my bull riding instructor and he came up with those words and I'm sure he probably took them from somewhere else, but that is a fact. And so that's part of where we're gonna go here. So what we do is we do PT, breathing exercises. Evening we'll have a group session and we'll talk about one question such as, um, you know, who, you, who we are or, or whatever, we'll ponder a question and discuss it. Also, you're gonna learn the anatomy of a horse, how to pet a horse, how to catch a horse, how to groom a horse, um, all the way from that to riding, no ranching experience is needed, or if you've been around horses your whole life, we'll take you to a vet and you wanna be in the program. So it doesn't matter to us. You're gonna learn how to pack and trail. You're going to learn equine nutrition and emergency horse, um, uh, medical care. You're going to learn how to transport and drive horse trailers and trucks and how do you move them around and things like that. You're going to learn that. You're going to learn how to cowboy shoe a horse. You're now in the middle of nowhere on a pack train, your horse throws a shoe, you need to know how to put a shoe on. So you're going to learn these things that are tough. They're not, they're not easy. And we also have the ability to have learn basic rodeo events from bull riding, saddle bronc riding to team roping. What they will have with them when they leave is, is that sense. Some of these are going to learn how to throw a rope on a cow, how to manage it, how to work cows, what a ranch is looking for, employees, and that kind of thing. And we help place people in this type of work. One of them from Boston never even saw anything outside of the city limits until they went to the military. So we can help with that because some of them need that. They don't want to talk to people anymore. They'd rather work around animals or on a ranch. <clears throat> We're going to have guest speakers like Nick Lavery, some rodeo stars, some people who are out there, Nick, if you don't know, if you always hear that saying, I don't know who the baddest dude in the room is, and, and we got some of them in this room that I know of, um, Nick is that guy. So if you're wondering who that is, it's Nick Lavery. Um, Army Special Forces guy, above the knee amputee. Um, so these people have agreed to help and come in and talk and talk with our people. <coughs> We, the, we, we need our partners here. I know there's some great 501 D3s in the room that we partner, we want to partner with, and some that we are now. At the end of 60 days, when you're getting ready to pop smoke, we have one other challenge, and it's gonna to be tough, and it's gonna be different for each group that we have coming through. <coughs> Things you're gonna discover in the program is examine and self-assess your current situation, physically, emotionally, and financially, you're gonna define the mission. In the Army, warrior ethos number one, I will always place the mission first. This is now your mission. I, you're gonna identify the lines of effort required to accomplish your mission. Research. Now, your mission may be different. You may want to be an EMT, you may want to be a helicopter pilot, you may want to work on a ranch in Texas. I can't give you those. They're, you're gonna tell me what they are. We're gonna identify those lines of effort, and you're gonna do the research. This is key to move quickly through that phase. You don't want to bog down in it. There's too much information out there today. You got to move quickly. Then you're going to get the line of advancement, 25, 50, 100 meter targets, and you're going to focus on those. You're going to stop doing anything that takes away from the mission. You're going to force yourself to do the things you need to do. You're going to focus. There will be setbacks. Some of our guys are injured. Some are disabled. Good things come to those who work hard. Great things come to those who are willing to do whatever it takes. 
What is the cost of this ambition you need to know before you come to our program? You gotta immediately disregard the haters. The social media, your friends, the jealous people, blah, blah, blah. You gotta immediately disregard it and put it aside. Who cares what they say? Loved ones will typically cheer us on. Why? Because they love us, right? Especially the vet, they know that. Your loved ones love you. But it can be also challenging because now you're on a mission. They're gonna start missing time with you. You're not gonna go to the pizza bar anymore because you're eating healthy. You're going to the gym, so they're gonna start missing these times. We're gonna create the BHAGs, the big, hairy, audacious goals, which by very name are long shots. They're Hail Marys. Resentment. When I use the term brother, it really means something when I'm talking to another vet or somebody still in uniform. It means something to all of us. Remember, Cain killed Abel. Why? Because of resentment. So we gotta watch for that. Um, people will be resent your successes. You may motivate some people. They'll be motivated. They'll be like, wow, you know what? He's walking five miles a day, I'm gonna walk my five miles. So some people will be motivated and cheer each other on, some won't. Some are gonna feel like you're making them look bad. Gotta to, they gotta build their own plan and structure for their mission, you can't do that. You gotta work on yours. When people see the positive effect on you by going through this program and learning these things, they're gonna feel left out again. You gotta be consistent. Anybody can do something for one day. I can teach you how to rope, and you can go rope a cow one day. Can you do it the next day? Can you do it when there's ice on the ground? Can you do it when your horse is lame? Can you, you know, those are the questions. 365 days, can you do it? Anybody can be great for one day. It finally worked out when I felt good. I'd never work out, right? Question, how can you stop somebody from that's willing to do whatever it takes? The answer is you can't. So we're bringing this back to the veteran community and we're propping them up. There's been too much of the, we're gonna go pet horses and we're gonna sit around and we're gonna take an air balloon ride or somebody's giving me a preseason ticket to a game that means nothing because, and then they go and pat themselves on the back that they did some vet a favor or, or saw PTS. And I know this talk is a little bit hard for people, but we're, we're a little bit different. <clears throat> so once you identify these things, on the, on the battlefield, it, it's important to know the position, the detail, where they're going, what's the terrain, what's the weather, what's the cloud cover. The most important thing is where are you? You gotta know where you are on the battlefield. If your goals change, then you're gonna repeat the process I just went through. If your goals have not changed, like being an EMT or a pilot, you're gonna repeat the process, but now you're gonna add in the stabilizer muscle things. You're gonna start nuanced, training yourself. You're gonna start adding more details. You're gonna get granular. But the process never stops. Not until your deathbed. You gotta meditate. We'll teach visualization techniques. We're gonna to work together. Um, I'm there, I'm still learning, I'm still going through it, I'm willing to do it every day. I'm not sitting back in some office somewhere having the guys go through the program. One unique thing is we grow, we want to prop up a veteran to come in and run the program with the ranchers themselves who want to do that, and that may be their mission. But we want to cookie cutter this program around the country and then we want the VA, we want the community leaders to come in and we want real studies done. We believe we don't have the only answer, we have an answer. 